Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the Back Office Teardown Lab. Today's video is a post bag video because a bunch of posters come in, and uh, I like I like to go through the post, and it, oh, you know, some of it's interesting. Ooh, and it gives you an idea of what's coming up in future videos. Now, this is an amazingly interesting one. Um, I will open it, but we'll go through it in another video because I want to give it justice. This is a component tester. So allegedly, you hook this all up and you can put components in this ZIF type socket here. And you see there, one, well you don't see because I haven't zoomed in and it's a bit tiny. But you see here it's got one, uh, focus. One, two, three, one, 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 one. Those are the legs. So if you've got a transistor, for example, you'd put one, two, three. If it's a resistor, you'd put it between one and two or two and three or three and one. Do you see what I mean? You could just ad hoc put components in there. This is a surface mount um, transistor type tester, I think. You know, for think of the things in the TO203 uh, package, you know, like regulators and transistors and things. That's it. And you'd, you'd hold it there. So you put the component in there or hold it there and you click test and it will tell you everything about the component, its values, ranges, you know, how it's wired up, which is kind of exciting, isn't it? I mean, if, you, if you're like me and you make a lot of kits, but you don't really know much, you know, you don't pay enough attention to surface mount resistors. You can pop surface mount resistors on that, for example, and it'll tell you what the value are. To be honest, though, surface mount resistors aren't normally my problem. It's the through hole ones. The <laughs> surface mounts at least have things written on them. And here is a, another one, and I'm just going to slash these. Slash them. Oh, cool. And this is a cool one. Uh, I'll definitely be doing a video on this quite soon, I should think, because I do have a NAF key. And this is basically the uh, a shell that will allow me to repair the key. So we'll do a key uh, shell repair video soon. And then I, do, I do notice when I look around the office, I do find all these old bits of keys and stuff. So I'm almost like a locksmith now messing around with keys. So that is an awesome thing as well. We'll put that aside. Now I'm going to open this one. I kind of recognise this one, to be honest with you, because this is the sort of glam plastic packaging I sent out myself um, to our good friend of the back office, uh, Brian Jones, aka Pova Power Crazy. And I say that, Pova Power Crazy. And uh, he's repackaged some atoms, which I sent him. Now these items are the, uh, look at that, RetroNet. It's, it's, it says it right there in bright, shiny writing. Look at that, RetroNet. He did tell me he had these uh, foil printed tape for the, the uh, sort of label printers and I wasn't sure how good it was, but that really is coming out well. I'm just holding the box off camera because I'm slicing it with a sharp knife just for a bit more control, but let's have a look. So he's repackaged these for me. He's done some tests for me because, um, they are far from perfect in terms of its wiring. I uh, relied on a footprint uh, for one of the ports and it didn't work out right. And of course, these are the ones I just loosely painted up. So I can already see from his handling, they had a single layer of paint and no lacquer. So they're already starting to look patinaed. But I quite like that patina effect, actually. It does look like uh, wear and tear, like we used to put on the old Warhammer. This one, of course, is unit one which is um, going to Tim Nichols, and I can get hold of him, um, for his Tatung Einstein. Look at that, though. It's quite nice. Look at that lovely foil label. I do quite like that. And this is the one that came out a bit like an aero bar. Even You can see I sanded it just to have a look, and it's got you can see the aero barness in it, although it is a, the only one that is in a proper black pigment, and it is it did come out lovely. I mean, the mould process actually changed since then, and it's got a, a slightly different mould, different dimensions. You can see it's, you know... But, uh, that that that's the special one. So Tim, that's for you. And um, Brian kindly has made this little adapter to fix the problem. Um, and I think ah, sorry, always wise. I think the problem also could be fixed by one of these null mode and mini adapters. But I've got to try it out. I haven't tested, but he now has tested. He I sent him four. I told him he could keep one, and he has. G good for you, Brian. And he kept the black one as in the painted black one and um, they uh, they do work now these are all programmed up I give him a, a, a sort of little instructions on how to use them everything and he's got on online with his power P, uh, PPC not power PC portable PC Amstrad portable PC 640 I think 
and uh, he's currently uh, working on his Commodore 64 and Spectrum uh, RS-232 adapter, so he's going to soon be getting them online. But this is good. This gives me the opportunity to sort out the issues in the PCB, because I'm about to push the button on producing these in a big quantity, and um, this obviously these fine PCB changes are really useful. But have a look at these labels there real quick, real quick. Um, he's done some nice gold labels here, which is a retro net 8-bit font with the little back office show. Um, I can say skull and crossbones, controller and uh, cross tools. How about that? Controller and cross tools. And look at these, they're all slightly different fonts. I, the middle one is definitely looking very Atari ST. I do like that indeed. And there's a whole load of different styles. He's done some different examples here, and they're fantastic. I, I need to get some tape for my label printer. I do actually. Um, have a brother label printer so there's no reason I can't achieve something a bit better look that was the sort of crappy one I did right there that's definitely no good compared to these but look there's a whole bag of these and my idea is when we uh, when we finally when I finally get my act together and get these in the post they'll come with a whole selection you know a selection of um, labels and you can label them up yourself for your system as you see fit now let's see what's in this last big heft, hefty bag going to shift the content to one end because of course I'm going to slice the other. That's really quite blunt. Oh, just as well I didn't slice too deeply. Look at that. This is an incredibly useful bag, um, although it might not appear useful to you right, you know, just from first glance, but its use utility will become apparent very soon. Now if you do anything at all with cars, you know, you're going to pull off bits of trim or door cards or anything, you are guaranteed 100% to break clips. And the problem is when you go to try to acquire new clips, they, um, one, they're expensive, and two, you'll just order clips and they'll come and they'll be wrong. They'll just be the wrong thing because there's so many options of, of clips. And if you look at this bag, I'm going to zoom in. I'm not going to open the bag because I don't want to decant it right now into something else, but I'm just going to show you. So these are some of the ones which are for internal panels. See right there, those ones which have the little springy bit and then a little flat bit that slides in the sort of card. And um, look here, there's even bits here for joining tube. You know, like your uh, windscreen washer tubes, that's what they're for. This one here with an hole in it, you'll see there with a hole in it, they come with uh, a peg there's a peg right there that goes in that hole and they splay out so there's a variety there so it is a kind of a mixed bag you'll have to search through it hopefully finding the one that will do or find one that will one that will do oh look there's one more here that's the kind that goes inside your sort of dashboard for you know bolting something so that'll go in a metal piece of metal like with it which has like a punched square in it and you can put a screw through it self temper um yeah so you will have to dig through it and hopefully you'll you'll have it'll have what you have you want um you might not but there's your best chance there, unless you really know what you've uh, got. Oh, these ones here, by the way. If you've got your sort of bits of card, um, or your you know your boot liner, for example, the bit on your back door of your boot, or maybe in your bonnet holding up some uh, soundproofing, that's what they use. So there you go. There's a whole selection of those. That's quite good. And that was relatively cheap. And I can't remember the prices of these things. So I'm just going to try to guess guess the prices. Um, I think that was about three pounds for the key blank. I think this was about six pounds for the component tester. I think this was about four pounds, four or five quid for this whole bag, which is super cheap. Go to Halford, see how much they these things are. Oh, this is really super cheap um, and these I've made so they cost basically a million pounds each because these are prototype batch units very expensive so there you go hope that's of some interest to you please comment uh, down below and uh, let me know if you like the logos of the Electronet the Electronet the Retronet and we can say thanks to Brian for doing all that thank you very much for watching